First things first, Robert, how are you? I'm doing fine, how about yourself? I'm, I'm okay, thank you for asking. So before we get into the record you've made, I'd like to go back a little bit. And I believe you grew up in, in somewhat of a strict household. So yeah, what, well, a real religious household. Uh, when did you come across the blues? Uh, definitely after I got old enough to leave home. Okay. So, uh, and uh, I left home kind of at an early age, at the age of 15. So uh, I had this, this dream or this vision that uh, I could throw a guitar on my shoulder and uh, and uh, walk the streets like Hank Williams would make me, <laughs> you know, and uh, become a, a superstar. But uh, that didn't work right off the bat. So uh, I guess um, the basic time when I really got into it was when I went in the military at the age of 19. Okay, I, f I find that interesting because. I can imagine in those days, and even now today, music isn't the first thing that pops to your mind when you think of, of a job or, or something you, you're going to pursue. So what, what made you go for music? What made you that passionate about music? Uh, I know I grew up, I grew up in a, I say in, in, in a religious family, so I sung in the choir since I was old enough to, probably old enough to stand. My dad uh, used to, uh, carry me and uh and and I would always he would always be petting his feet and mm -hmm. and singing and somebody would come get me and then he would stand up and uh I guess just watching the reaction of the of the congregation mm -hmm. uh kind of planted that seed in me um because he could uh as the old people would say he could tear up a church when he wanted to so mm -hmm. I like the the, uh, the attention about it, I think. Uh, well, the fact that the the way he, it looked like at any time he could just start the church to rocking, right? And uh, it seemed like seemed like a fun thing to do. But uh, I looked at the blues. Uh, you know, he looked at the blues as as devil music, so I was really a kind of afraid of it. And when I first started to uh, doing R&B and blues, I really kind of felt a guilt feeling mm. for a long time. But uh, after dealing with, um, I first went to the military at a young age, and first time on my own, mm. uh, mismanaging my first paycheck and stuff like that, uh, that kind of, I think gave you the blues because the blues is really just a reality mm. thing. Uh, it's it's it's. I found out it's not a bad thing at all because it's true. Uh, the only difference in the contemporary gospel and the and the blues now in R&B is instead of saying Lord, they say baby. You know, and other right. than that, uh, you either say baby or Jesus or baby or the Lord, uh, and. Uh, other than that, the music is basically the same. I learned that after, uh, you know, playing it for so many years. And so uh, this uh, type of childhood and then going out on your own, and, and then a lot of things was totally different from what, because my dad was teaching turn the other cheek, mm -hmm. and uh, the military was teaching we got to kill. <laughs> Right. So it was a totally different, you know, broad in the world. So you got to put me out of that narrow-minded thinking. Mm. Um, and you, so I had to kind of figure out life myself in my own way because dad wasn't around anymore and my father had gotten uh, killed in an auto accident. So I was pretty much in the world uh, alone other than my mom. and. Uh, she wasn't, you know, able to uh, financially to do all the things we would need it done. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually joined the military to uh, support, have a sure way of supporting my mom. Right. So was it during that time in the military where you kind of found your musical voice or you found your, uh, or did that come later? Mm, well, the, I, uh, 
like I say, the singing part, uh, I had been doing all my life, so mm -hmm. um, I really didn't, you know, didn't think that much about it. Uh, okay. It was uh, the uh, guitar playing, uh, you know, I bought my first guitar when I was 12, so mm -hmm. that was always, I had a passion for it. I always sit at the front seat uh, when we went to church and watched the guitar players. And it was just something I always, always wanted to do. Uh, something about the music that, that uh, I just couldn't seem to shake. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the reason why uh, I t I tell people now. Uh, here it is, uh, fifty two years later. Uh, I'm uh, I'm actually living my childhood dream because mm -hmm. I. I, in the military, I played in a military band. Uh, I, I helped form uh, the band in basic training. Mm -hmm. And I won a little plat. It wasn't a big deal because it didn't even have my name on it. It just had an outstanding entertainer. Mm -hmm. uh, but it meant the world to me. So I cherished it and I took it with me to my AIT. and. It was in my military records that I was a musician, so in AIT at the time for graduation, uh, I was allowed to uh, put together the band for right. for the graduation in AIT, uh, we'll finished that training. And so my first the, uh, station was in Germany, in Illerschein, Germany. And just so happened the first time I got there on a Friday. I was told to report to duty that Monday. So uh, the sergeant told me where the recreation center were and I just went and checked out a guitar. Mm. And I was sitting there playing on the guitar and a young man came up and uh, said that the guitar player had just gotten out of the service and had went back to the States and they had a picnic they had to play for that Saturday and he said we got a picnic tomorrow and we don't have a guitar player and I was like well I don't I don't know y'all's music and he said well you just play what you playing and we'll just we'll just back you up so that was really a great opportunity because right. even before I signed in to my duty station I got a chance to uh, perform before the whole battalion so it was kind of like I met everybody at one time. Mm. So great. Do you remember the feeling it gave you to perform for other people? What me? The the feeling uh, you got from performing for other people. Oh well, it's 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 I don't know the words to explain it, but uh, it's something you can really get addicted to. Uh, to uh, something about being appreciated and uh, the gift of music. Um, it always open open doors for you everywhere you go. You know, like I said, uh, all through my military career, music was the thing that got me uh, known. And if I went to a strange town, or if if you make music, you make friends. Mm -hmm. um, I always said music is a universal language. Uh, between music and a smile, you pretty much can can make it anywhere. Right. And so, because like you say, you're now living your childhood dream in a way. But I, I'm sure you must, did you miss uh, kind of that part of your life? Because I'm sure you played music along the years, but did you miss or did you kind of regret that it didn't happen to see you? Well, uh, yeah, well, you, you, you always feel like uh, it's it's not uh, it's a possibility that it may not happen, mm -hmm. but the uh, greatest thing is if you don't give up on it. Um, it's not an age limit thing. Uh, everything happens within time, and uh, I always believe that uh, if you was in the right place at the right time, uh, things would happen. Mm -hmm. um, I could not p get a band to in the military. The band was simple because uh, if a person took the job in, as a member of the band, 
they had to be where they needed to be on time or they was AWOL or they could be court-martialed for not uh, making the, the gig. So uh, that would be their military duty to be there. But once I got out of the military and tried to uh, put together bands, uh, guys may show up, they may not, or they, they, you know, we didn't have the technology that we have now where you can talk. So it turned out to be a stressful situation. Right. We're always, uh, the, somebody was always late and somebody was always, you know, got a problem, they can't make it at the last minute. And then, um, so you're walking around, uh, it was nerve wracking, wondering if the bass man gonna make it on time. Or it's just, mm. So finally I just got uh, frustrated with it and I just went to playing solo. And um, there were nowhere really to perform because uh, there was, you know, there was no theaters and no clubs. There was the only place you could really do your music was churches. So, I started back to uh, playing for quartets, and that's uh, I. My mom sung in a quartet, so I played for her group, and then uh, her kids. I mean, the group, all of their kids could sing, so I got the kids together and formed another group uh, called uh, Brother Finley and the Gospel Sisters. And we we did well because uh, we got some sponsors and we got our own uh, little radio show. Sorry, so um, yeah, you, you were saying uh, about uh, Finley and the Gospel Singers and so you had... Um... Yeah, I formed this little group called the Gospel Sisters and uh, they uh, we got our own little radio show with uh, KMAR in Winsboro. It was Brother Finley and the Gospel Sister Gospel Hour. Yeah. And uh, so the the parents were the Harmony Five, and we I played for them, then I formed the Gospel Sisters. And as the time went by, the, the young boys got old enough to start singing. Then I started the group, uh, the Gospel Brothers. Yeah. And uh, so uh, the Gospel Sisters, uh, did great on, because they were young when, when we started, but then when they got older, they st started to get married and moving off, and so soon they, that group dissolved. Right. And um, finally, then I, uh, I, I moved on uh, to Texas, and then I, I never really uh, could get anything organized that I believed then would do. So I started back to carpentry because that's what my dad uh, was a carpenter after he moved off the farm. Right. 